live it to match even though you're a murderer. I've never met anyone like that. Even my mom's nicer. The 2019 movie Unplanned depicts a real life story of a pro-life activist, Abby Johnson. The movie is based on her book, which has faced a lot of allegations from uh, you know, journalists and uh, from the people who worked at Planned Parenthood Clinic with her. I actually made a video about Abby Johnson a, a while ago, and I remember that her story didn't really make that much sense to me, but I was like, I you know, it's anecdotal evidence uh, anyway, so maybe, who cares? No amount of uh, human experience would negate the value of access to abortion. Now it makes a little more sense that maybe her story was a little bit fabricated or at least changed enough to uh, align with her new newly acquired values. And the movie is uh, way too dramatic. It's also way too long. It's like two hours and it really shouldn't be. There are a lot of really weird scenes that just seem out of place and the movie can do without easily. They do not contribute to the plot, they don't contribute to the atmosphere and like, or the, the agenda. They don't, they aren't funny, they aren't, they're just there. The, the anti-abortion anti propaganda is just staggering. Basically everyone who works at the Planned Parenthood clinic is an evil entity and everyone who works for this Coalition for Life is the anti-abortion movement that she later joins is a saint, which is of course very accurate and very impartial, clearly. Good job, Abby. Abby's boss, the, the Planned Parenthood Clinic director, is uh, like a Cruella-esque uh, villain, cartoon villain with just no empathy, no redeeming qualities. She never says anything nice or just not evil. She doesn't have a single line when she's not being evil. I've never met anyone like that. Even my mom's nicer. In fact, the only three-dimensional character with like conflicting ideas and plethora of personality traits like every human being on the planet is. The only character that was well scripted and well developed is Abby. No one else, everyone else is just, just a cardboard uh, cutout. Like her husband has one trait and a, that is loving her and being pro-life. Her parents have one trait and that is being pro-life. The clinic people uh, have one trait and that being evil. Coalition for Life volunteers have only one trait is being extremely nice and just patient. Very one-dimensional. Good storytelling. Mm -hmm. No, never heard of it. So anyway, the movie begins with uh, what's her face? Abby being recruited for Planned Parenthood. She's at this college, like a job fair, job fair, I guess. And she stops at one of the stalls and there's a woman in a cowboy hat for some reason. I guess Texas. Yeah, that's why cowboy hat, Texas. She talks to her about Planned Parenthood and that the main goal is to decrease abortions to uh, by providing healthcare to women, right? Uh, including uh, contraception and um, obviously they do other work that, that she does not mention for some reason, but they do a lot of they do a lot of work. They do screenings, uh, cancer uh, diagnosis, and stuff like that. They do a lot of things. But anyways, again, this is the first weird scene in the movie <laughs> where she she's like, "Are you thirsty?" And Abby says, "Yeah," or something. And then she hands her an empty water bottle. Why is it here? It makes no sense, and it's all relevant. The the bottle is never mentioned ever again. So she gets recruited and she goes to the clinic her first day. And on the way there, she's she's narrating the story and she says that she didn't tell her mom because her mom is like a super pro lifer Christian woman. So is her dad, by the way. She didn't tell her because well, she knew that her mom would support her. And she says a phrase: "Never trust a decision your mother wouldn't approve." Uh, I think she was just trying to be quirky and relatable like my mom and I are very different people and there are a lot of things she doesn't necessarily approve but it doesn't really matter as long as she accepts it because I'm an adult that's fine right so it's a little, little codependent 
see you're a grown up grown ass woman you can make your own decisions so she arrives at the at the clinic she exits her car she's going to the door and the other uh, nurse or volunteer or something she's opening the door and the code is 2229 and abby's like oh i'm, not, I'm never gonna memorize it that was like the simplest code ever two numbers uh but she only said that so the nurse could reveal the evilness of this organization because the code actually spells baby Ooh. why not just spell kill or evil i don't know <laughs> like if you're going there just go there all the way i mean i don't believe that i do not believe that this is an actual true story but so then she describes that she had two abortions she met this guy who was an asshole he was also 10 years older than her when she was a freshman in college so she must have been what 18 19 he was almost 30 so he was bad of course and she got pregnant and he pressured her into having an abortion and she had an abortion and then some time has passed she found out that he was cheating cheating on her and she filed for divorce and then she realized that she felt pregnant again and she had a second abortion and the second abortion was chemical she took a pill, misoprostol, a pill, it's a common abortion pill. And the experience that she shows in the movie is that shit crazy, honestly. It's just mind-boggling. She, she even says that, like, by the end of it, she was, like, lying on the floor thinking she was dying. Like, the amount of blood that was in the scene. And just, it's just so gruesome and gore and it like borders a horror film. By the end of it, she, she calls the clinic and the clinic is like, it's fine, it's all okay. And she's like, I've been cramping and I've been having blood clots for eight weeks. I feel like shit. Allegedly, on the other hand, on the other side of the conversation, the person said, oh, it's all okay. It's normal. And she's like, how is that normal? You didn't tell me it was normal. The truth is, it is not normal. Heavy bleeding is normal, but it's more like just heavy period with uh, cramps. Which I'm sure it's painful, but again, according to information that I've found, bleeding usually occurs within 4 to 48 hours after a misoprostol administration. It's normal to see the passage of blood clots and tissue, and they depicted that in all the, the horrific details. Uh, heavy bleeding and cramping usually lasts for about four hours. Light bleeding may last for about two weeks. Light bleeding. She was talking about like eight weeks of feeling like shit. So I'm pretty sure if this happened, I'm sure it can happen, you know, like uh, there always are exceptions to the rule, but I'm sure if that happens, if you talk to the nurse or the doctor, they're not going to tell you it's okay. They're going to be worried and they're going to urge you to seek medical help. It does not sound very believable to me. And of course, obviously with this scene, they're trying to scare you to show you how bad abortion actually is and how much you're going to suffer. When in reality, the risks of damaging your health in pregnancy is exponentially higher than during an abortion. Here is a study, the comparative safety of legal induced abortion and childbirth in the United States. And the results are the pregnancy associated mortality rate among women who delivered live uh, neonates was 8.8 .8 deaths per 1000 live births. The mortality rate related to induced abortion was 0 0.0 deaths. In the one recent comparative study of pregnancy morbidity in the United States, pregnancy-related complications were, were more common with childbirth rather than with abortion. Again, this is not new information. We've known that for a very long time. Pregnancy amplifies any health complication you might have. It just surfaces it all. So, first of all, most abortions do not look like it was depicted and even if it does it should go to the doctor seek medical attention the thing is that if, if something like that happens it, maybe you have some sort of underlying condition right and this underlying condition would have been a lot worse in pregnancy it's not a very good point um then abby has a conversation with her parents where they're like you, you know dare you work for the planned parenthood organization they're evil na, 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 na. and abby just can't defend her position have you ever met a a pro pro choice activist like someone who works at the Planned Parenthood clinic someone who's like very devoted to the cause who cannot defend her position it's funny how they have to like represent pro abortion uh, activists as like dumbasses who <laughs> just cannot defend their point in order to win the argument because they wouldn't they wouldn't win it otherwise then she finally goes to marry 
the a good Christian man. He seems like a good guy from the movie. He doesn't, you know, do anything necessarily terrible. But the thing about him is, you know, any other character, he's very one-dimensional. Basically, the only thing we know about him is that he loves Abby because he said it like 10 times in the movie. Which, I mean, if you <laughs> if you have a spouse, of course, tell them that you love them all the time. That's awesome. But it's a movie. We don't need to say that that often. And we don't know why, by the way. He never really explains that because they're so different on like basic values. Basically, he thinks she's a murderer because that's how pro-life Christian activists see uh, abortion providers. Can you imagine uh, marrying someone you think is a murderer? I, I, I just never understand his, his rationale. He never, he never goes into detail to say why he loves her. He never says like, I love your conviction. I love that you are you know, very persistent and you stand by your beliefs or anything like that. He just love it too much, even though you're a murderer. Well, he never says that, but you know. And uh, basically he's uh, juxtaposed to, his, to her ex who coerced her into having an abortion. I mean, I'm not sure he did, like, from the scene. He just kind of said that it is an option. He didn't really force her. Maybe he did in real life, obviously. I don't know. I don't want to speculate. But in the movie, he didn't. In the movie, he just said, you know, I know a place we can take care of it. Didn't really sound like coercion, but maybe she felt coerced. I don't know. So yeah, there's no gray areas. There's either men who are pro-abortion and they're assholes. They're going to leave you. They're going to cheat on you. They're going to drink. They're going to be uh, toxic, abusive, and just awful. And also kind of pedo. And there's a good man and, and, and he's Christian and he's... And, and that's it. And he loves you and he's against abortions. No gray areas, no subtleties, nothing. It's just very binary. It's lazy. It's so lazy. By the way, if you're a poor choice, don't marry a man who does not care about your rights, about your autonomy, bodily autonomy. So they show her back at the clinic. Basically, they're just showing how they, how Planned Parenthood coerces uh, women into having an abortion. When in reality, they're simply offering it as a service. Like if you something if that's something you need, we can do that for you. They are showing it as a as a business that sells a product or a service in this case. And there's also this 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 weird weird scene where Abby gets called to the POC room by her boss, and then her colleague is right there. So she heard the conversation, and when her boss leaves, her colleagues tells her, "Do you know what POC is?" And Abby's like, products of uh, conception. And uh, her colleague says, no, it stands for pieces of children. And like, that just kind of stunned me for a second. I did not see that coming. I don't know if anyone actually ever uses that term in abortion clinics. I doubt that because it like fucked up. I tried to find anything and I couldn't, I didn't, I, I don't know. I couldn't find any any information like outside of the movie. I mean, like actual, you know, medical specialists talking about this room or about this uh, about this slang name for it. So basically, it's a room where they store aborted fetuses that they have to construct to make sure that nothing is left in a female's body. And obviously, again, not a doctor read from the research that I did, that I've done, I found this uh, court document from Planned Parenthood Exposed, Examining Abortion Procedures and Medical Ethics at the uh, Nation's Largest Abortion Provider. I'll link the whole document below, but it's a ginormous document. And it's a Congress meeting where they're basically debating Planned Parenthood and whether or not it should be defunded. And uh, one of the doctors who was at the meeting, he talks about something different but he well, mentions that when they e extract the the fetus they kind of store it like on, on the table and they assemble it right there so why do you need to go to another room and then reassemble it again if you can just do it while you're working most abortions are are performed before 12 weeks so the fetus is t teeny tiny you can do just right there i think it, they just included it for shock effect. Anyway, she goes into that room with fetuses, right? And her boss, the Cruella lady, I mean, she, she has a name. I don't remember. Who cares? She's a, she's basically a villain, right? She's a cartoon villain. She tells her to 
look at the fetus and Abby does and she touches this little hand and her boss says, says that most most uh, Planned Parenthood uh, employees could not hold their posture when they walked into this room. They felt, you know, dizzy and disgusted and nauseous and Abby did not show any sign of any signs of distress. So that means that she's the one. You were the chosen one. It was said that you would destroy this and not join them. She literally said, you, you're the one. I laughed <laughs> audibly at that because it's like this, you are the one trope. You're so special. You're so special, Abby. You're not like other girls. You're special. I, there's no timelines, by the way. I have no idea how long she had worked at the clinic by that time. Anyway, she tells her, <laughs> she tells her, you're the one, Abby. You are the chosen. And she tells her that she is going to be promoted and get some job in the corporate and uh, Abby would take her place as the director which is also weird I mean she has a psychology degree right she's not a nurse she was not performing abortions she was a counselor she people would come to the clinic they would talk to her they would tell her their situation and she would give them advice that was her job well not really because she said that she, they were selling abortions uh, but uh, uh, I'm assuming in real life, not in the crazy world, in real life, uh, counselors, they counsel, right? They consult the patient about their health, whatever health concerns they have, their, their, whatever their situation is. And also, again, Planned Parenthood is not only about abortion. Abortion procedures make up an, inc an incredibly small portion of the services it provides, only 3%. For example, in 2013, Planned Parenthood provided 900,000 cancer screenings to women across the country. 88,000 of those tests detected cancer early or identified abnormalities that might signal a greater risk of cancer. Planned Parenthood clinics have a lot of services. It's not only about abortion, so I'm sure that's what counselor also does. I mean, this movie does not depict any, any other type of service Planned Parenthood provide. So she gets offered this uh, incredible opportunity to become the director for some reason and then they have another weird scene where her husband sensed that she was pregnant before she was because he's a good christian man he's a pro-lifer and she's an evil pro-abortion lady so he even he's a better woman than she is because he has this connection with god and uh, believes that life begins at conception this scene is very weird because we could have just found out that she was pregnant and it would be fine. Why do we need this weird foreshadowing with her husband? Why do we need to know that he knows that she's pregnant before she knows that she's... I mean, the only explanation that I could come up with is that, you know, he is pro-life, so he has a like better connection with God and God tells him things. Or is that too crazy? I'm not religious, so I don't know. So the next day she goes to the clinic, she takes the test at the clinic, and as she's looking at her test, for some reason she's doing that not in her stall, but like in the bathroom, the common space. It's just a very weird scene. <laughs> and her boss, the gorilla, she sees that, and she's like, well, you know, we can take care of you here, right? Because of course she's a soulless cartoon villain. And then she starts basically pressuring her into aborting her baby that basically will like stole her career but abby does not give up she's like no i'm gonna have my baby and then corella says the most fucked up phrase probably in the whole movie well uh abby says like if you don't want me to work with patients maybe i can do some like office work right like stay behind the the doors and she's like oh no no if anything it will encourage women to abort like seeing you pregnant have you ever met anyone this evil and of course another gory scene because there's quota we need we need a gory scene every 20 minutes otherwise Planned Parenthood is gonna get another uh, wave of funding, I guess. There's another gory scene where a woman, well, actually a very young girl, she starts bleeding after the abortion and Abby catches that. They show this uh, very bloody foot, so like the, the blood uh, streamed all the way down to her heels and they take her to the uh, operation room or something and oh my god the scene i mean first of all the doctor as he enters the room he pushes abby that she almost like smashes her head against the wall he would just tell her to 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 take a step 
to the right and then follows this gruesome scene where she's losing a lot of blood and everyone is panicking and 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 abby says well, let's call 911 she needs to go to the hospital and of course corella is like no no one's calling the cops because all these protesters outside they will see and they will make a story out of it and then this will fuel the like pro-life activists. Have you ever met anyone this evil? Can you imagine anyone doing that? Prioritizing their reputation? Which is already kind of in the toilet because, you know, like for these people, obviously, you know, pro-choice people are probably fine with Planned Parenthood, but people who are already in this camp, like, you're not gonna make the situation worse or better for them. Like, they're, they're, they already hate you. It doesn't matter what you do. Can you imagine? prioritizing this over an actual human life like dude that that will never happen especially again whatever the director maybe she's not a doctor maybe she does not carry a medical license but the doctor who was helping out he does carry a medical license he can lose his job if he does that like i'm sure that would never happen in real life but yeah. so they save her she's fine and then abby gives birth which is again why is the scene here the entire scene of abby giving birth is her screaming from pain and then her husband telling her honey sorry to disappoint you but you're only two centimeters dilated and her like being angry at him for saying that and that's it that's the end of the scene and then she's the baby why is that here does it again does it again mean that her like her life is harder because she's not a true christian also why did why didn't she take epidural dude to like um so after she gets birth her mom starts pressuring her into first of all being a stay-at-home mom and second of all to quit Planned Parenthood because she was like, well, I, I saw that when you have your daughter, you would re reevaluate your ideas and you would leave this organization. And she's like, nah. And then mom tells her, her husband or Abby's father, well, she won't quit. She's got aspirations in like this very condescending tone. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> she's not allowed to have aspirations. The hell? So she stays uh, at home for a few weeks, then she's back at work. The movie has very weird pacing. Then she's back at uh, at Planned Parenthood, and the protesters are back, and apparently they're filming the entrance to the clinic, uh, which I mean, I'm sure that happens in real life. So fucked up. So she goes outside because women are calling her, telling her, hey, I can't get inside because I don't want to be filmed. And she goes outside to confront those uh, protesters. And uh, it's, uh, by the way, it's the same two people every time. It's Sean something something and a blonde girl. I forget her name, sorry. It doesn't matter. She has like three lines in the whole film. Sean is um, like the 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 founder of, of the of this pro-life uh, organization so like he's more important so she has this argument with the with with sean she asks him to stop filming and he refuses and then they get into this argument and he uses the so-called holocaust argument i'm sure you've heard of it when they're like in the holocaust that many people died and if you look at the abortion rates this many people died so it's even worse than the holocaust which is so incredibly insulting that I can't even like if you I'm not gonna go into details about the Holocaust but if you like really this uneducated look it up just look what people went through and what conditions they were held how they were killed maybe this will deter you from comparing things to Holocaust because nothing can compare to Holocaust not Jewish people love talking about the Holocaust like it's uh, so Abby, Abby gets promoted and she says the phrase, kind of terrifying phrase, that uh, I was I was the best at selling abortions. And then they show her again coercing women into getting abortions, which is not what Planned Parenthood does. And then they show the uh, Coalition for Life, this couple, Sean and his wife, and they're hugging and they're clutching to each other and they're saying, one day... One day, 
this place is gonna close foreshadowing much huh then i don't know if sometime later again no timeline we have no idea when happens when and um anyways a tornado comes and they have to move all their patients to like one day cram them in all in one day a lot of women who cannot wait another two weeks to have an abortion oh uh, because obviously during tornado it will be dangerous to travel and again uh, the entire movie she narrates and then she says that some of the patients lose their boyfriends bailed so that they had to like find some other way to take them home and again this just very blatant dichotomy like there's either good christian men who will forbid you to have an abortion which is a good thing somehow or they are a loser boyfriends who are alcoholics they cheat they're assholes blah 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 who will pressure you force you to have an abortion very subtle uh so again some time later they have this conference where all clinic directors have to attend and the speaker is the cruella lady right we miss her ass she talks about some bullshit statistic whatever whatever she rewards abby with the best uh, employee of the year and then she gives the plans for the next year and one of those plans is to double the number of abortions that clinic provide. To which Abby gets up and gives this this, this speech that na, 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 abortions are Planned Parenthood is supposed to be decreasing abortions. No, no, not doubling them. Corella just ignores her. I feel like she would have something to say <laughs> or whatever. Well, in reality, the number of abortions did increase because they started to provide chemical abortions like the, with a pill so before that they only did like medical abortions and then on top of it the pill came into play and pill makes up for 50 percent of abortions so it doubled but it, it not because they sold more abortions so after the speech uh, as i said corolla completely ignores her and the conference continues and then when the conference is uh over uh, Abby goes outside and Cruella pulls her to to a side and basically tells her that you know how dare she talk back to her and she wasn't even disagreeing she was just like asking why what's the point right but instead of giving her some context she just ignored her so anyway so she pulls her uh, to the side and tells her that nonprofit organization is a tax status not a business model and they are still making money and the way they make money is with abortion abortion pays a salary and the abortion pays her your benefits abortion pays her free time maternity leave na 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 which is not true again abortion accounts for only three percent of uh, their services so math isn't mathing uh she uh well basically she just yells at her like she's a fucking child and uh, then she gives the most disgusting metaphor with burgers french fries and soda that like fast food uh locations restaurants don't make money with burgers they make money with french fries and soda low cost products they're like uh, they don't cost too much to produce and the upcharge is a lot higher and uh, she follows by by saying abortions uh, is our french fries and soda again have you ever met anyone this evil cartoon villain literally cruella like it's not it's not a human being at this point so after this argument she gets officially reprimanded she gets called to the corporate office cruella and some other people in the room i don't know they scold her for you know not agreeing with her and just saying something uh and she's like i'm the most hardworking, and i'm like you just gave me the best employer of the year i work so much I'm so committed. I'm so special. I'm I'm just so great, and you don't appreciate me. That's by the way what Abby does say in real life. Oh, I mean I, I don't know the details of it. There is so much speculation. Again, according to the article that of course I'm gonna link below, something happened and her performance did go down, and she did get some sort of performance review thing i don't know if her performance actually slipped or maybe there was some gossiping involved like obviously we don't know what actually happened but something did happen they wanted to monitor her, her performance a little more closely and then this uh, overly dramatic scene from the from the beginning of the movie i skipped it because timeline wise um 
It comes later. This is the scene where she gets called to assist with an abortion, which by the way, by that time she had been working at this clinic for eight years, according to her, and she has never assisted in, a, in an abortion procedure, which is a little weird because if it wasn't her job at all, then why was she called in this particular situation? And if it was something that she was doing every once in a while, then that would have been... It just doesn't make sense that after eight years, it's her first time. And also another weird detail, when, when she got the, again, first time, right? And she has to apply lubricant on this woman's stomach area, right? To For ultrasound. And before applying it, she tells her, oh, it's cold. Don't worry about it, right? And I feel, I'm, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like if it was my first ultrasound, it was the first time I've ever assisted, I don't think it would occur to me to warn the patient that the lube was cold. Like, it seems kind of obvious, but I think it just gives it away that it's not her first time. Because it's, again, it's kind of obvious advice, but it's if it's your first time, you'd be so nervous. It, 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 like, it just wouldn't occur to you. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. By the way, I forgot to mention that the whole story of this abortion taking place has been heavily scrutinized. Texas Monthly, the journalist from this uh, organization, uh, from the article that I linked below, they asked uh, Planned Parenthood employees to pull the files and to make sure that this type of abortion did take place on that day. And they found no record of anyone of a 13-week pregnancy having an abortion on that day and then when she was pressured even more she said that it was a black woman and again there was no record of that happening and for some reason in the story she's not black but i mean i guess that doesn't matter she applies the this uh, lubricant the doctor performs the uh, ultrasound she looks at this baby and as the doctor begins to pull the baby out of her uterus the baby begins to rapidly wiggle and like like it was in a lot of pain that terrifies her and by the way according to again information that i found the american college of obstetrician and, and gynecologists the science conclusively establishes that a human fetus does not have the capacity to experience pain until after at least 24 to 25 weeks so 13 weeks there's no way the fetus was feeling any pain let alone wiggling this I mean, it's just again it's another scare tactic to, to scare and terrify women and uh, shame women who have had, a, have had an abortion procedure done to thinking that they're, you know, these monsters and making them feel guilty about what they've done. Another absolutely gruesome scene, because like he, he, the doctor is like removing the baby and it like goes through this, this long tube into another sort of container with what looks like raspberry jam or something. It's so unnecessarily gruesome. Basically, this finally makes her want to quit. And she, she runs to the bathroom, she's crying there, and then she leaves the clinic in the middle of the workday. She goes to the Coalition for Life and, you know, begins her journey back to God, which is also debatable. The the article that I will link below says that there's been probably like a couple of weeks before she went to Coalition for Life. There also been some allegations that she must might have been offered some money to be this like spokesperson, but obviously that's uh, speculation. I have no idea. Obviously since then she has made a lot of money on that because because uh, now she's a social media personality. She writes books and stuff. I don't know. And of course, when she goes to this organization, the people there are absolute saints uh, compared to her colleagues at Planned Parenthood. They're just angels. They're like, we're going to help you. Don't worry. We have you. We're going to help you find a job. You're gonna... <laughs> and then they say that you should be careful because the repercussions of leaving Planned Parenthood can be like life changing can be very very bad it's not a cartel you're allowed to leave at any time who cares then she has like this existential crisis when she's crying and saying that she she's complicit in in in, in aborting twenty two thousand children and she's like i lied to them i lied to them I'm like why did you lie to them because if you if you watch her movie yeah she did lie to them <laughs> but you don't have to lie to them you can just offer a service and that's it it's like coercing people into getting chemotherapy 
If they don't need chemotherapy, they don't need chemotherapy. Makes no sense. We see her back at this coalition for life and she's so happy with her new best friends. And she's like, yeah, whatever you pray, the percentage of no-shows goes to 75%. First of all, I don't believe that. Second of all, yeah, no shit it goes up because women are scared. They're scared of being judged and yelled at by those crazy protesters. You're already in such a vulnerable state. You feel alone and scared. And then a bunch of strangers are just gonna yell at you. So then we see her bravely going to the fence, even though Sean told her that it could be dangerous. Like why, why is that day? What is Planned Parenthood gonna do with her? Are they gonna murder her? It's not a fucking gang. It's a non-profit organization. She, she bravely goes to the fence and uh, stops this very young, impressionable woman and tells her that if you get inside you're gonna come out a different person they're not gonna they're not gonna give you an ultrasound they're not gonna let you see the baby because because they're evil and they're charging by the size of the fetus the bigger the size the more they're gonna charge which is not an explanation for why wouldn't they show her an ultrasound by the way but uh, whatever it's just so silly especially when yeah a lot of clinics actually force you to have an ultrasound even if you really don't want to because it can be traumatizing like you want to abort this child you want to terminate the pregnancy because for whatever reason you can't go through with the pregnancy so actually looking at the ultrasound can uh traumatize you so forcing women to to look at their ultrasound that's bad not vice versa but you know whatever you just didn't plan parenthood bed Abby good and then Cruella come, shows up of course and she gives her the speech when I'm like you made the most powerful enemy with the most powerful organization in the world it's not by the way literally if you just look up like the most the most uh, powerful organizations in the world Planned Parenthood does not come up ever so Cruella is like mm -hmm. And then the segues to Halloween were again just another weird fucking scene with weird pacing, weird jokes, her husband being all quirky. It's just all over the place. You see like this gory raspberry jam abortion scene and then he's like, I love Halloween because I can't get handy. You're a 40 year old man. What are you, why are you acting this way? It's so weird. They're dressed up and they're costumes and they're walking and then she bumps into sean and then sean is like planned parenthood is suing us but we're gonna fight them back because i know jeff paradowski and he's a great guy and she's like is one of the guys from the billboards how small is that town there's like only one uh billboard yeah it's the guy from the billboard and then honestly the most awkward scene in the whole movie they stand in front of this brick wall where they clearly like cgi'd the billboard uh on it i don't know why why they just couldn't put up the billboard and and he's like jeff this is abby abby this is jeff and they just look at this uh billboard and <laughs> walk away it reminded it reminded me of that commercial when uh, the guy is like walking for like half a minute and he then he's like I love refrigerators. It's just, it's so weirdly paced, and so awkward, and again, so unnecessary. <laughs> like, why is this scene here? But then I looked up Jeff Paradowski, and uh, I think it's an ad, because it's an actual website, it's an actual law firm. He is not in the movie, uh, he's portrayed by an actor. Uh, it's clearly an ad, so. And then they have this court procedure that they do not show, by the way. And Corella is like, you i don't know she said something everyone's attacking her because she's so important she's abby johnson and she resigned from a planned parenthood i guess it's the first person in the existence <laughs> since planned parenthood was founded it's the first person to actually quit because everyone gives a shit for some reason i mean the court uh the lawsuit did take place but it took place because abby was a uh perceived as a disgruntled employee and uh, planned parenthood was kind of scared that she was gonna disclose confidential information about doctors and patients that's why the lawsuit 
happened not because she's so important literally nobody cares abby and then the, the lawyer it was on one hand it's clearly an ad right at the same time they uh, they portrayed him as like the cheesiest the cheesiest dude ever supposed to stand here and be quiet that is not fair fair is something you give a cab driver the law is something entirely different so tell me the truth were you ever worried <laughs> what me worry <laughs> I was sweating like the devil on Easter morning. <laughs> I don't know why they made him so cheesy and so unfunny. And then, yeah, they all like embrace each other and they're like so happy that they won. And the movie ends with um, like some time has passed uh, again. We don't know. And uh, Sean calls Abby saying that the Planned Parenthood clinic where she used to work is closing. And they're so happy about it and all that. But the thing is, it, at least from the movie, it's not really evident whether or not they had anything to do with it. Could have just closed because of lack of funding, which is a notorious occurrence uh, when it comes to Planned Parenthood. So I don't know, they, they because they cheer like as if they accomplished something when they really didn't and uh, the movie ends with them laying flowers at the at the fence of the of the clinic for each baby they have uh, aborted and uh, abby she lays two flowers and uh, she says the phrase i mean she talks a lot but she says the phrase sorry i didn't love you enough to keep this from happening it's just it sounds so victim blamey and just manipulative well in the end of the day when planned parenthood uh, clinics close women just lose access to healthcare. Uh, again in the same document uh, in this document someone can i cannot decipher who's speaking when uh, there has been a lot of discussion about abortion here today and abortion is a very emotional subject for people in this country. And I think this is why we've ended up in the situation we have, which is where, uh, which is there is no federal funding for abortion. And so if the effort to cut off funding from Planned Parenthood would succeed, we would cut off contraception, but we would not cut off abortion, which is an absurd result, I must say. You know, I have known women who have had abortions and I've never met a woman who felt happy about it. This is not a festive occasion. It's a situation where women find themselves and they make a choice instead of the government telling them what to do. I think of the daughter-in-law of a dear friend of mine who had an abortion late in her pregnancy when she found out that the much wanted child she was carrying had all of her brains had, had formed outside of the cranium. This child was not going to live and she and her husband were devastated. But she was told by her physician that if she carried this child to the term, not only would the child die, but she might die. And certainly she would never have the chance of having another child. We think about the women all over the country who struggle with this decision and make a decision. But one of the important things is to provide con contraception so that women don't have to be faced with such terrible decisions. And I do think that one of those important things that Planned Parenthood does is to provide birth control to women who want to control their own fertility. And if we were to get our funding from Planned Parenthood, that would not be available to the women, many women who live in my community in San Jose and in Kilroy. That would just not be available. And I think that would be a very wrong thing. So that's why I was surprised to, to see reviews and MBD saying that it was very well balanced and unbiased. It was very confusing to me. Like if you like it, uh, that that's fine, but saying that it's unbiased is a little is a little, little cuckoo to me. How's that unbiased? Literally, all reviews are either one star and people absolutely hating it. Most of these people are pro-choice, not all of them though. Or it's like eight, nine, ten people loving it. Nothing in the middle, which would be more accurate, because I wouldn't give this movie one star. Like, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I've seen the Serbian film, so... So I think the more accurate would be like three, four, like something in the middle. Share your thoughts in the comments if you have any experience with Planned Parenthood, because um, uh, I'm not American. I've, uh, I've never been to Planned Parenthood, even for like non-abortion services. Whenever I research it, they're like very conflicting accounts. Some people say that it's a great place and some people share their unpleasant experiences. And I'm sure the truth is somewhere in the middle. <laughs> it usually is. I'm sure Planned Parenthood is not perfect, but it's also kind of the best 
uh, people in the states have yeah celebrating the shutdown of a, another clinic is is weird to me but anyways tell me what you think have a good day and go ahead and trust the decisions that your mom does not approve Thank you.